I'm here with uh, Gabor Harsani, and I was, I'm asking him today to speak to us about going within. I want to hear the how-to, the practical aspect of spirituality, of going within. We've all heard, go within, wake up, we, oh man, you've slept long enough, and I've been on the path for many years, in fact, I'm writing about it right now. I thought it would be a good idea for him to actually show us how to go within. Gabor. So it's a it's a very um, general uh, general deep uh, question, I guess. Uh, Nuri's question was how to how to go inside. Um, perhaps I can um, elaborate a little bit as to why why go inside. Uh, why is it so important to? consider going inside. Um, it's, uh, the reason for its importance is because that is the way to actually attempt to control the mind by actually slowing it down or stopping it. Uh, our mind normally because of our culture and because of our uh, uh, sophistication because of our hurried nature, it just runs, 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 and we think that that is the way to be efficient, that is the way to be um, uh, more faster, bigger, better, that is the way to get better marks. We got to a stage now as a society where that will not work anymore. Um, we lost connection with our being, deep inside being. And therefore, as much as the mind covers up uh, the deep being of us, to that extent we'll have to be more efficient, more rushing. To that extent, we'll have to put in more effort to our undertakings. Or simply just to uh, manage uh, the everyday uh, the everyday events of life. The question was how to go with him, so the how to go is already started. I, my voice is slowing down a little bit and as you see this, uh, look into my eyes. Don't worry, it's not hypnotism <laughs> or whatever. And as you look into my eyes, just uh, feel your hand. What do I mean by feel your hand? Uh, I mean that you keep looking into my eyes. You don't have to look down, see where my hand is. Just know that your hand is there. Be aware of your hand as you look into my eyes. and uh, smile at it. What do we mean by smile at it? Just simply smile inside. You don't need to understand how to smile inside. We don't need to know how to define it. Just smile. <laughs> and so, um, pick an, let's pick another body part. Let's see your knees. Be aware that your knees are there, even though you're looking into my eyes. Again, smile at it from the inside. If it's difficult, first smile outside. That, out, that outer smile usually has an inner representation, so then just simply send it to your knees and send that smile to your thighs. Send that smile to your nose. Any body part that you want. I don't want to make a system out of this. Just keep looking into my eyes. 
I don't want to create a meditation or a system out of this. Everything is moment to moment. Whatever is coming, whatever word comes out of my mouth is live. If I create a system out of this in the memory, <clears throat> then I introduce the enemy of timelessness, which is time. Just keep looking into my eyes. Let's pick another body part, your chest. Know your chest is there. Feel it. Smile at it. What about your foot? You know your foot is there even though you're not looking at it. Smile at it. Now every uh, breath that you take from here on in, basically will connect what we call the inner body. It will give your inner body an inner integrity. I hate to divide things, I don't want to divide things, but there's an outer body and an inner body, conceptually. Let us temporarily accept the fact that there's an inner and an outer body. Your outer body has proportions, If you take a look at your hand in comparison to your forearm, it uh, has a certain proportion, what we call the golden mean. So the outer body has a proportion. What am I saying with that? I'm saying that Nature provided us with some proportions and when our mind is running, our inner body is in conflict, we're not in integrity with our outer. By slowing down, not externally but internally, the inner body will be in, in integrity with the outer. When the inner and the outer is in integrity, you have the possibility that your being will recognize itself. Just keep looking into my eyes. To understand what I mean is very, very secondary. It's not important. I'm telling you true facts about your inner and outer body. If you need more information about that, you can look that up or you can be watching for uh, uh, videos that we're going to be putting out on that subject in the future. So your attention, your eyes, is connected to my eyes, listening to my voice, but most importantly feeling your inner body or any part of your body. If you feel that you got out of it, just simply look at me and feel your hand. If you're no longer with us because it's too boring, I understand. That means that you are not ready for this kind of simplicity. We're going away from complexity to simplicity. Now, just because you're not ready at this moment for simplicity, 
it does not mean that you're not going to be ready tomorrow morning or five minutes from now. So just uh, be, be with me, be with us. You start to feel this incredibly warm, loving feeling in your chest and in your heart, with your inner body, when the inner and the outer comes into alignment, you will start feeling the feeling of being. The feeling of being is not in time. So it's not the same as a feeling as a result of meditation. Meditation has a beginning and an end. I'm trying not to structure this at all so that you would not uh, mistake this for some sort of meditation. Am I against meditation? No. What I'm against is bringing in time to a particular exercise, lack of a better word, into an exercise that's supposed to lead you to timelessness. Just be. This is simple. This is who you are. That's your nature. You inherited this. It's your natural inheritance. I'm not giving it to you, no one does, you already have it. The more time we spend in timelessness, <laughs> you may have noticed the paradox here, the more chance your uh, being has to actually recognize itself. Once that happens, you no longer need any teacher myself or anybody. It's that simple. As long as you are willing to turn within, pay attention to your inner body, pay attention to inside, you have the possibility of that door is opening what Jesus talks about. Once that inner calm comes over you and that door opens, which is uh, equivalent to going through the eye of the needle, what do you have to do to maintain it? Are you listening? Are, are you listening? Are you sure you're listening? Nothing! <laughs> In a timeless dimension, not doing is how you get your so-called results. In the dimension in time, the rules are totally different. They're not even similar. So we cannot use rules that we have learned in the third dimension where time is of the essence, time is a common denominator. We cannot use that in the timelessness. You are a timeless being. What dimension is that? <laughs> it isn't timeless. You just are. Now you might say that this is a... Okay, this is wonderful. It feels good. And by the way, um, just a little something. If you're... Uh, wherever you're sitting, if the voices around you or the music or whatever you're listening to becoming a little sharper
if what you hear becomes a little sharper, that means that your mind either slowed down or stopped. What we did is we uncovered your being. That's what you feel. Here is what's important. It's an absolutely perfectly functional state. It's not something that you do every Sunday morning. It's not something to do twice a day as a meditation practice. It's a perfectly functional state. Because the mind might say, yeah, yeah, this is okay, this is nice and calm, but I, I, I gotta get to work, I gotta make money, I got to pick up the kids. <laughs> and the mind assumes that the only way to pick up the kids, and the only way to cook, and the only way to do life is to rush, 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 because after all, that's what we're used to. You can't possibly imagine, or the mind cannot possibly imagine, functioning from this perspective. If you consider this as a separate event, it's totally useless. Why? Because by considering it as a separate event, you're introducing time. Introducing time pollutes it. Introducing time opens the door for a saboteur saboteur, a person who does sabotage. I might as well not bother. It's a functional state. What do I mean? First we practice being and walking. Oh, isn't it amazing I can be and walk? Okay. Not so bad. Yeah, but what about what about blah, 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 what about picking up the kids? What about this? What about cooking? What about shopping? What about standing in line? What about going to Costco? And what about this? What about oh, okay? <laughs> That's you. I was imitating your mind, by the way. <laughs> the point is that any function, any function, including sex, can be should be done from this perspective. It's a clean perspective. Anything you do, you do it without a reference point. It's clean looking, clean hearing, clean feeling. Like a kid. Yeah, 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 but what do you mean a kid? A kid doesn't know how to do this and doesn't know how to do that. That's true. From this perspective, you can pull in all the narratives that you learned in your adult life. You start out by no reference point, clean, clean looking, clean questioning, clean doing. If you need a narrative or a skill that you have learned, if you need a narrative, then you can just pull it in. But the narratives that you learned are not going to control your life or get you confused. Like for instance, the phone was ringing now. It's not a problem. It's life. We're not doing it as a meditation, practice. We're not doing it as a separate event. Life happens. The phone rings. So it rings. We don't need outer silence to be silent inside. The difference between outer silence and inner silence is like comparing the butterfly strokes in swimming to the butterfly. That's about how much they have in common. So this was just a um, small taste as to basically as to who you are. 
I'm not teaching you anything. If I started to teach you something, that would be a great error. I'm just being here with you. My mouth opened and I just talk. The so-called kingdom of God is really so close to you. It's already within you. I'm helping a little bit by uncovering which your mind covered up and telling you, most importantly, that this is a functional state. If you make it a non-functional state, again, you are not getting anywhere. Unless you looking inside, unless you learn how to pay attention to inside, your spiritual life has not started yet. Nurita, I hope that this answers your question and uh, look for further videos coming up from us and God bless you.